Hello, we're ready for Magic Treehouse, book number 17, Tonight on the Titanic. We are ready for chapter five. As we come to um, any pictures, I will make sure I show you the pictures. The boy wore a nightshirt. He had red hair and freckles. He looked about four years old. He rubbed his eyes sleepily and then he saw Teddy. Puppy, he said with a huge smile. He threw his arms around the little dog's neck and Teddy licked his face. Come back to bed, William, a voice called from inside the room. Come out, shouted Annie. It's an emergency. A moment later, the door opened wider and a girl in a long white nightgown peeked out. She had red hair and freckles too. She was tall and thin and she looked to be about 12 or 13 years old. Hello, she said. She put her arm around the little boy. I'm Lucy O'Malley. This is my little brother, William. I'm Annie, said Annie, and this is my brother, Jack. Get your parents and tell them to come with us, Jack said. So we have Jack and Annie talking to the girl and the little boy at the door. And there is the little dog in the hallway watching them. And water is starting to come down the hallway right there, as you can see. Lucy looked confused. Our parents aren't here. They're in, the, in New York, she said. We're on our way to them. Listen, the Titanic has hit an iceberg, said Annie. We'll take you to a lifeboat. What do you mean, said Lucy? The ship is sinking, said Annie. Look, she pointed to the water at the end of the hallway. Oh no, cried Lucy. Don't be afraid, said Jack. Just get your coats and your life belts. We don't have very much time. Lucy nodded and, then nodded and then she went back inside the room and came out with their things. Lucy pulled on her coat and her life belt. Annie helped William put his on. Let's go, said Jack. Wait, can Teddy fit in your knapsack, said Annie? Well, we can try it, said Jack. Annie slipped the little dog into the leather knapsack on Jack's back. Only Teddy's front paws and head stuck out. Stay there, honey, she said, and she kissed Teddy on the nose. Jack didn't feel any extra weight in his knapsack. The little dog felt as light as air. Wait, I forgot something, said Lucy. But we don't have time, started Jack. But Lucy rushed back into the room. Hurry, shouted Annie. When Lucy came out, Jack saw her slip something into her coat pocket. Then she grabbed William's hand. Ready, said Jack. Suddenly he felt freezing water brush against his toes. He looked down. The green sea water was slowly moving down the hall. Arf, 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 barked Teddy from Jack's backpack. Run, cried Annie. Chapter 6, Women and Children First. Annie led everyone down the hall to the stairs away from the cold sea water. As she and Lucy helped William up the stairs, Jack and Teddy followed. Halfway up the staircase, Teddy let out a yelp. Jack looked back. The water was creeping up the stairs step by step. Come on, Jack, Annie shouted. Jack ran up the rest of the stairs. He and Annie led William and Lucy through the smoky room. The men were still playing cards. To the lifeboats, Annie yelled at the card players. Right now, hurry. The men just smiled at her again. Little girl, one said with a laugh. Even if this ship does sink, it will take all night. There's plenty of time for everyone on board to be rescued. Indeed, many ships are on their way right now, another man said in a soothing voice. There's nothing to worry about. That's not true, said Annie. Lucy turned to Jack. This doesn't sound so bad after all, she said. It is bad. Please trust me, said Jack. We have to keep going. They went outside and the crowd on the third class deck had grown. Many wore life belts, but no one here seemed very worried yet. Jack and Annie pulled Lucy and William along. They hurried through the crowd and down the first class hall. They came to the end and they troop, trooped up the grand staircase. On the top deck, the Titanic was a bright, on the top deck of the Titanic was a bright, it was as bright as a Christmas tree. A band played lively, lively music, and with a hiss and rush of light, a rocket streaked into the sky. It made a loud boom, and then it burst into many colored balls. Shivering in the cold, William laughed, and he clapped his hands. Fireworks, he shouted. 
Lucy smiled at Jack and Annie. This is a trick, isn't it? She said, you've brought us to a party. No, it isn't, said Jack. Don't you remember the water downstairs? Lucy's smile faded then. Women and children first, someone shouted. That's you, said Annie, come on. She pulled Lucy and William toward a lifeboat. So here's the big picture and then I'll get close so you can see. The lifeboat was waiting to go, or chapter seven, I'm sorry, the gift. The lifeboat was waiting to go down. It looked tiny as it swung on cables at the side of the big ship. The water below looked black. Get in, get in, a uniformed man shouted. No, no, said William. He hid his face against Lucy's coat. Lucy was shaking her head. I'd rather stay here, she said to Jack and Annie. Jack understood. The brightly lit Titanic seemed so solid and safe compared to the little lifeboat. You can't stay here, said Annie. The Titanic is going to sink soon. Very soon, said Jack. Lucy just kept shaking her head. Jack saw tears in her eyes. Lucy, we're telling you the truth, said Jack. You and William are in great danger. You have to be brave now, said Annie, for your brother's sake. Lucy straightened up and she sm tried to smile. All right, she said, I will. This way, a man called. Women and children, this way, you four. He pointed to them. Get in, said Jack, and he gently pushed Lucy and William forward. Goodbye, Lucy, said Annie. Goodbye, William. Lucy looked surprised. You're not coming, she asked. No, we're going home another way, said Annie. Oh, dear, I hope you'll be safe. We will. Don't worry, said Jack. Wait, said Lucy. She reached into her coat pocket and pulled out a silver watch on a chain. This is a gift for both of you, she said. It's our father's watch. We carried it on, a, on the voyage for good luck. I have a feeling that the two of you were our good luck tonight. Jack looked at the watch as Lucy put it around Annie's neck. The time on the watch said 150, 150. There was only 30 minutes left. Hurry, hurry, he said. Jack and Annie watched as a big man picked Lucy up and swung her into a little boat. Then he picked William up and put him in Lucy's lap. Bye, cried Annie, and she stepped forward to blow them the kiss. Just then, the man picked Annie up. No, shouted Annie. Into the lifeboat, my dear, the man said, and he tossed Annie into the lifeboat. No, 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 cried Jack. Then the man reached for him, too, and Jack jumped away just in time. Annie, get out! Annie tried to climb out of the lifeboat. Let me out, she cried. Arf, 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 Teddy barked from over Jack's shoulder. The lifeboat jerked, and it started creaking down toward the dark, cold sea. Come back! shouted Jack, but there was nothing he could do as Annie disappeared from his sight. All right, and we'll start back up tomorrow with chapter eight, Every Man for Himself.